All right, let's go ahead and test audio, make sure everyone can hear me okay. we still got three minutes left before the stream starts, so we're gonna just do the testing and then we'll let people filter in. All right, howdy, sound is good, awesome. Welcome, Dak Forest. Awesome. Good to see everybody. Awesome. Philip. Awesome. Hey, just to let you know, Philip is going to be moderating in the chat today. If you have any questions, please ask him, okay? Great. The audio's working. That's great. Is there not too much uh, feedback or anything? That's good. I want to make sure my mic settings are good. Okay, for those who are here so far and watching, just to recap on what we're doing. Last month we made a bunch of terrain maps and we used Fantasy Regional, Fantasy World, all the different styles. And so we're going to go over two styles today, Fantasy Regional and Fantasy World, and we're going to build settlements on that terrain. That's going to be a lot of settlements. So this uh, stream might be just a tad longer than normal, but not too long, okay? Because I have to do it with two. We did a parchment stream last week, and we've wrapped up that parchment map. Okay. Looks like people are filtering in. All right, I'm going to quickly just mention a couple of announcements. So if you guys haven't checked it out yet, check out Map, uh, or I'm sorry, let's stick with the first one, uh, Discord. If you, any of you are not a member of our Discord server, you should go right now. Philip will go ahead and post the link to our Discord in the chat. Now make sure that when you go on, join our Discord server, that you go to the Roles channel and click the Incarnator role. Now the incarnator role is going to let you have access to all the channels in the server. Our Discord is absolutely fantastic. We have a great community. Everyone is very helpful. Uh, I absolutely recommend you go to map feedback, post your maps, and people will give very, very good feedback. It will be very helpful, help you up your game. Awesome. The Discord link is there. Go ahead and join. Okay. I also want to make sure that you know there are two links in the description of this video that give you uh, links to these terrain templates that we created. That's how to create Fantasy Regional Terrain and how to create Fantasy Regional World Terrain. Make sure you click those links, clone them, and save them, and that way you can follow along. Okay. I also want you to know that what I'm going to be teaching you in this video is not necessarily how to create certain themes, but techniques that will help you to create the theme that you want. So let's go ahead and start with Fantasy World. I'm going to go ahead and open up the map. Bob Ross, love it. <laughs> awesome. You're working on a, Drew and Dragons working on a, uh, your own temple right now for Fantasy Regionals? Awesome. Okay. Let this map open up. I do enjoy reading the chat. Might be a little slow to load. There we go. Okay. Now, just a recap 
on this template so that you understand how it works. The, the squares that have uh, the first ones is a plus sign. So these squares, every other one, so one, two, these two right here are going to be made on the add mode or the mask tool, the FG, and these two are going to be the FG, the jungle pool, arctic, mountain range, and floating islands. They're on different layers. I can go ahead and add that plus sign just so that you can remember it like this real quick. Bear with me here. I'll put that together. Now I just did that so the textures wouldn't blend, bleed into uh, into the other panels. That's the only reason why I put that together. And I know next time I'll have to change that arrangement. So I've added a little guide here at the bottom. These aren't on your templates, but on mine, just to remind me of what I'm working on. And so um, we're going to go through the techniques on how to make points of interest or POIs. And for the mountain range one, we're going to make a lake town. I'm going to go ahead and delete the mountain range label and just keep the lake town. You're going to use your mouse scroll wheel to scroll in and out. That's how you do your zoom. Okay, and you also press space bar to pan. It's a lot easier to use your mouse scroll wheel than having to switch over to the magnifying glass with the pan and zoom. Already you see there's a hold space bar to show that you can do that to pan. Okay, it's probably a lot easier to uh, zoom in and look at your spot and then instead of zooming out and going to another spot, hold space bar pan. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in to our first panel where that mountain range is, and we're making a lake town. A little something about POIs and scale. Like technically, with you're trying to keep things within a relative scale. It's going to be really hard to keep it ultra realistic because technically this is a representation of a map. And if you make something uber small, you won't even be able to see it. Technically, these trees are out of scale with these mountains. So you're going to have to make some sacrifices and try to understand that there's a style that you're going for. Make it, shrink it down as small as you can, but also keep it there so it's visible and focus on maybe um, making a certain kind of style for your kind of points of interest. So we're going to make a lake town. And as a lake town, we're probably going to want to ring this lake with some um, POIs, with some stamps. You're going to go to the stamp tool. That's the O key. That's just going to open up this panel. Okay, then you're going to press the F key to open up the catalog. Now this opens up the whole catalog. You're going to see everything in it. Okay, and it's under the fantasy world style. You can open this in the left panel so you can see all the packs within that style. You're going to jump over here and we're looking for specific things. Okay, so there's a search bar here or you can scroll down. If you'd like to be that kind of person who likes to see all of it, click that expand toggle and everything will be revealed. So that's every single stamp within a set will be expanded or collapsed so that you can see what's in it. If you don't want to scroll through lots and lots of the catalog, instead go ahead and use tags. You're going to find them here. And all the different buildings, different kinds of terrain, whatever you're looking for. I'm going to punch in human and a bunch of human labeled things pop up. I'm going to click expand all. I kind of want to see what my my options are. And we have to pick a style that we want to go with. Now there are two types of icon styles or three actually in this in this style. There's these flat forward facing stamps. There's also these isometric style or not purely isometric but more isometric than these. And there's also this these icons that you can work with. Okay, and it depends on the style that you want to go with. Now, if you wanted to go with a much smaller scale, you wanted to make things go to scale and you didn't want to stylize a large city, then you could just use one icon like this, this small human capital. You could use this capital, but you'd make them very small. Okay, so let's try this one first. And already at 100%, we're at such a small scale. Let's go ahead and check what our scale is for these mountains. These are at 30. Let's go back, click that icon that we want, make sure it's set to that scale. It should be set to 30 already because it remembers the scale setting of the last thing the stamp, the selection tool selected. So there's this flat facing black 
icon. It's fairly small and that can represent an entire city. You don't have to add all the details of having a town all around. So that's one way you could go about it. If you want to keep it small, keep it close to scale, that's one way you could go about that. And you could put those all around the map like this. And that's if you want to go with a simple, you're focusing more on the, let's say you're focusing more on the terrain and not on the POI locations, the points of interest. That's your focus. So that's the style you want to go with. If you wanted to have focus on the points of interest as much as you do on the terrain, then you would ch choose a different style, right? So you'd go back to the O key to open up the stamp tool and the F key to open up the catalog. Let's say you want to go with something a little bit more detailed. So let's go with this human capital like this, okay? And you want to put it somewhere special because it's a capital, it's a big building. So you maybe want to put it on top of a hill. You make sure it's set to the right layer. Let's say that you wanted to put it on top of the hill like this. This is just one part of your lake town. There's this nice town part over here and you wanted to put more around here. Now I'm set at 2K right now just because of streaming. It kind of causes serious lag. In 4K this would be much more crisp. Make sure that you also check um, the disclaimer about 4K editing. It is still experimental so keep that in mind. So we're focusing on what style we want to go with. There's this more isometric, it's more detailed, and it fits with this particular art that we've put down. Does anyone in the chat want to pick a particular style that you think works best? Does anyone prefer isometric or do they prefer the flat front facing ones? While people are figuring that out on chat, I'll go ahead and start adding some stamps. Me personally, I like the isometric, but I'd go with either or. Okay, let's zoom in with that mouse scroll wheel. Don't forget that pan. These are pro tips. These are really gonna help speed up your process by understanding the tool and the shortcut keys. That's gonna help cut down on how much time it takes to make a map. Really, really helpful, okay? All right, looks like we're going with ISO, perfect. So we've already added one here. Now this could be the entire POI. This could represent the entire lake town. You could just move this hill, put these together like this. You can group them. And you can, immediately when you make a group, I suggest you name it. So you could just say POI1 if you want, whatever you want to label it. And since it's a lake town, we can move it over to here. Move it down, it's grouped down to here, put it like this, or have it overlapping. Make sure it's set up a layer above. That lake, that water is a path. You could place this anywhere you want, and you could say that's your lake town. Or you can add more to it and have the town cresting some of the lake. And I think that would look way more interesting. It will take a little bit more time, but it can be done. All right, so let's go ahead and take some of these hills and put them around the lake. And we're gonna put POIs or locations on top of those hills. Okay, so more structures. And the way that I like to do it is have one central structure, and that's gonna be this one right here, and put some smaller structures around it. So we have these two hills here. We're gonna take some smaller isometric structures, O key, F key. My options pop up. Now I've already got this large building right here. Instead, we can put something smaller there. You could put, let's say, maybe an inn like this. You can put that over here. Make sure it's gonna be on a layer above. Just check. Push it up, there we go. You could put, let's say this is an inn over here and then you can put another structure right there. And let's make it a little bit bigger. And don't forget, to overlap, and by overlap I mean have a stamp overlapping something else like this lake. This gives it more dimension, more depth when you overlap. See how this hill, this roof right here is overlapping this river right here, or this little tributary or whatever it is. Stream, can't tell. It's overlapping a little bit, making it look like it's got more depth. We're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna put a stamp on top of that, okay? 
open up the catalyst, pick one of these, put another large structure there. Let's go drop it down a size. Click that shift key, mouse scroll wheel. Okay, that's how you scroll through your sizes. That one looks kind of big. We'll place that on top like this. And if it's too high up, this is already at layer five, so this needs to go down. I'm just gonna click it back to zero. You have a one on top of there. And we'll also line a bunch of hill houses along here and along here. So it'll be cresting just a little bit around it to give you a nice kind of river town or city. Now have some structures on hills and some not. Okay. So I'll place this. It's gonna be overlapping, right? Overlap this hill. I'm not gonna use the same stamp. Place one there. Don't forget to overlap over here. Put a larger one here. And then put them in clusters. When you're placing them, a single house by itself doesn't always look good, but it gives it a more towny look when you place little clusters. I like to use clusters of three in any arrangement. There's three here in a nice arrangement. There's three here, there's three here. I'm gonna put another one here as well. Right about there. Okay, they're all in different arrangements, but they're in these clusters of three. I do that same thing when I do my, my trees. You'll see clusters of three, clusters of three. That's just a quick rule of thumb that you can do to give things a natural look. This town looks better when you do it that way. Okay, let's add a couple more buildings. Let's add one over here. Make sure it's overlapping. Same thing here. Okay, and we'll put one more up here on this side. Okay, now once you've added all your buildings, you can also put together the road system that's gonna put it together. Now because these POIs are so small, there's no real need to use texture for your road. Okay, instead I would use the path tool. And the path tool is this one right here. You can press the P key and we'll open up the path. Immediately I recommend that you make a path. Now that path is live and editable, okay? So when I make change in the slide bar, you're seeing the changes live, okay? That's good because you wanna be able to see what changes you're making before you apply them. So you put that down. We're gonna change the width. White is a generally good color if you want uh, the, the road to stick out. Okay, if it's too bright, you can drop the opacity down. Okay, now that's a, that looks about right. I'm gonna place it down, look at it. This looks good. Also be recognize what layer it's on. I see that it's overlapping this mountain. We don't wanna do that. Let's go down a layer so that the path will go behind the mountains. Okay, that's good. So we got the path that we want. I'm gonna delete that one. Okay. Now I have the path tool selected. And I'm gonna start at the main large structure here and have it branching out to all the areas and clusters that I made. So there's a path going like this. And you're gonna to want to add some curves. Add lots and lots of curves to your roads. Roads should not look like this, okay? There's a reason why that is. Roads bump into elevation changes, hills, ridges, all that kind of stuff. And so the road has to be built to go around that. To give it a natural look, you add curve to all your roads. Never make your roads perfectly straight unless it's a very zoomed in map where it's a section of a road and it's very small. Then it will more likely be straight. And even then, I don't recommend maps like that too. Add a little bit of curve because curvatures are easier on the eye. They look better than straight lines. Let's go ahead and add some more. Let's have another road going this way, arching around and going here. And you can have the road going out and like this, okay? And the same thing can be done here, like that. So you have this main road that seems to line along the lake and goes all the way around where the town is. So you have this nice town scene right here. Looks pretty good to me, I like it so far. Okay, let's go ahead and make, I, don't, I know I only have 47 changes, but for the sake of posterity, I'm just gonna go ahead and save it right now anyway. I'd hate to lose some of that beautiful work.
Dak Forrest, I agree with you. It's always good to try to keep the art within the similar, within the similar perspective. I would also argue that going outside and trying different things, different styles, making uh, different kind of POIs, also can be fun and makes your map pop out from other maps too. Because your objective is you want your maps to pop out and be different from other people's maps. That's the trick. You absolutely want that. Make your map pop. Make it different. All right. We've been in about 20 minutes, and I still have a long way to go. But do you understand the basics? There is one last thing that we can do to make this good. Two things, really, is we can add some more foliage, add some texture, and then we're going to add a label. And I'll let you guys decide the name of this river town or lake town, OK? So I will wait for titles in Lake Town, and it's not the first that posts, it's just the best one. Really, I love humor. If it's funny, you might get picked. So if you've got a good name for this Lake Town, please post it in the chat. All right, so let's first do the foliage. I'm just gonna select one of these trees, and I'm gonna copy, paste. I'm gonna place it down and check and see what layer it's on. I wanna make sure that it's overlapping the path. So it looks like it needs to go up a layer. There we go. I don't want it to be showing up anywhere. And it, I see also that the river or lake, so let's push it up to layer five so it's overlapping everything. Now I can select the object tool and it will pick the last stamp that I selected. And you're gonna place these and just have them overlapping both the path and your hills. It always looks nice to add some overlap. Again, to give it some character. Don't forget those groups of three te technique we were talking about earlier. And if the group of threes look wood, look bad, add just a random tree somewhere to break up those clusters, okay? Another trick is to also hold down shift, scroll wheel down, and go down a couple sizes. Okay, and what that will do is it will break up the monotony of these trees. They all look the same size, and that looks weird. In reality, when you look at a forest, there's so much diversity. So if you just add in a couple small trees like this, it will give it so much more realism. Okay, it looks so much more natural when you have variation in your foliage. And it doesn't have to be much. All you have to do is just take the same tree and scale it down couple sizes, 20% 20, 20 or so, and just put it down. It needs to be a visible difference between the larger one, between these two, okay? It just has to be a visible difference, and there is a difference. Already, it gives it some character, right? That these trees are just a little bit smaller. And don't forget to add them in around the town, overlapping the lake. On that side would look good, one there. Put a couple there. Right, so there you go, more overlap, looks good. Let's also throw in just a little bit of texture. Kind of looks weird that you have these nice green trees, but there's not any green grass. So what we've done by creating all this stamp, this positive space, by adding stamps, that's our positive space, we've created little sections of negative space. That's the perfect opportunity to throw in your grass texture. So you just go ahead and press the B key. It should open up the brush tool. It should open and close it, okay? Now, it's important that it also closes it because sometimes it gets in the way of what you're doing. So just close it, okay, with that same key that you opened it. Let's go ahead and pick a green texture. This green grass will work just fine. If you're not satisfied with it, you can just open up that catalog, also F key, and pick a different one. I kind of like this grass mixed. This is nice, so let's just pick that one. And we're also going to drop the opacity quite a bit because I don't want it to be too bright because it is quite bright. But if you drop the opacity, you can decide how bright it's going to be. We want to retain some of that brown texture underneath. So dropping the opacity will do that. Let's also drop that size. You can use, I believe it's W and S to change the size. Yep. Those are the shortcut keys. Now put your brush up to next to one of the negative spaces, and then you can decide how big you want your brush to be. This size looks good right here, okay? And we have it set to the right layer. 
plus. So this is this the add mode or the the FG layer, and you can switch between your layers, your brush layers, with your one and two keys. So two key BG, one key is the FG. And you're gonna start with one stroke and just put it down like this. Start with that first stroke. Oh, just go into those negative spaces. You've done one stroke, go in, do it again to all those negative spaces. Okay, pan, move over. Again, apply it into the negative spaces. And even some along the river, because you would expect grass to be growing along the water, right? Here too, a little bit of that same thing around here and here. Put them in those negative spaces. Okay, now you've done that first pass. You want some sections to have more grass than others. So in the center of those negative spaces, just add another brush stroke in. Just to make those pop out a little bit more, make them a little bit more green. Those pop out more, that's nice. Okay, now that you've added that, you've done your texturing, you've filled in those negative spaces. And remember, you can apply these techniques to any theme, so it doesn't matter. If you know these techniques, if you know the order of operation, if you know what to place first, then what to add next, then it becomes easier. You really, really want to speed up your map process, okay? You really want to work on that, okay? Sweet, 74 changes. We're going to save, just to be safe. I'm going to go ahead and check chat. Let's check out our towns. we got Titan's Bathtub. <laughs> Uh, it's hard to say no to that. Tear Lake Town, Devil's Mere, and Lake Mount. Oh, dang, they're all so good. It's so hard to decide. Oof. That's a tough one. I don't know. Titan's Bathtub is just... It's just so funny. I think I gotta, <laughs> I gotta add that. Let's go with that one. Thank you for the suggestion. And don't worry, I will make sure to do everyone's suggestions. Now I better wrap this up quick. Let's do a quick quick lesson on labeling, different ways to label, okay? Text tool, I think that should be the T key. Quick over. There are different ways that you could do this. Since there's so much negative space here, it's okay to make a label using a banner. Let's go O key, F key, open catalog, and I'm just gonna type in banner into the search field and you can just pick your choice of banner of what you want. I'm just gonna choose this one. Now this is a huge banner, it spans the whole thing. So you could scale it down if you want. I'm gonna put it a layer below. Let's put it layer four, unless that lake, okay, let's do that. Layer four, because you want your text to be on layer five. Let's scale it down a little bit more. Let's see, let's put this here. And I'm gonna put the label above the central the central structure, this large stru structure that seems to make the most sense. Like if that's the central piece, then maybe you should put your label there. And there's not much going on the lake, so there's nothing that you're accidentally covering up or anything like that, because that's how you should factor in your label, is, is the negative space you have around your location. And if you're finding that there is no negative space to put your labels or your banners, then consider making some negative space so to fit your banner in, in advance, okay? So then we'll add that. We're going with Titan's bathtub. Thank you so much. Don't worry, we'll get everyone's suggestions. There's a lot to do. This was kind of a longer one. Sometimes I can just get carried away. Picking your text is important as well. We'll go ahead and add some text, we'll give it that name, Titan's Bathtub. And you might have to do some scaling, scaling it down to fit into the banner as well. And you're also gonna have to factor in the curvature of the banner. So I'm gonna go into the negative to curve upward. And I'm also gonna center it into it. It still looks just slightly too big. Now it's at 2K, so it's gonna be blurry. We're gonna go ahead and click this 
fit to screen button. It's in the corner. It's going to reset the map position and zoom so I can zoom out. I just want to look at it from a distance. That looks nice. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Take a look at it. Path works together. Little town what comes together. The label is there. It looks good. Thank you so much for the suggestion. Really appreciate that. Don't drink the bath water. Okay, so that one's done. I'm just going to save because we finished that section. We're going to go over to the asteroid impact. And some of these are not going to be quite as detailed as this first one because we still have a lot to go. So some of these will go quickly. Again, just remind yourselves that this these are techniques you can use just for any kind of POI. It doesn't matter what it is. Okay, asteroid impact, and we went with a forge town. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Don't forget the textures are on the are on the uh, BG layer. You have your forge town. Okay, we're gonna make this one quick. It seems to be in the isometric style, so let's just keep keep in that particular perspective. O key, F key. I'm gonna turn off that in the search field. And let's go with dwarf. When I think of a forge, I think of a dwarf. So let's think of that. Now there's this style right here. This is that front facing. We don't want that. We want one of these. I see some, there are some forge stuff right here that's nice already. So let's go ahead and pick these. Okay. And there, it looks like they're really small. So let's go up and scale to fit it in. Zoom in. Now, how am I going to make a forge? Let's go ahead and put a central structure in the center, like this. And that's on layer four. We can also bring it down more layers just to see how more, if we want to stack more on top. There we go. So it's at layer two. That way we can stack some other stamps on top of that. And if the perspective looks off, which I've noticed that it is, the perspective does look a little off, you can go down to Advanced Settings, go to Transform, and we're going to change the height just a little bit to kind of fit better in with this because it looked a little off, and it does look like I used the Transform tool on this crater to give it more perspective. So we'll have to apply that same thing using that Transform tool. Open back to O key. Open up the catalog. Look at these other options. Let's keep using these icons to piece together our forge. Let's place this one here like this. And I realize that this stamp is actually set to luminosity, so I'll have to move that. So far, so good. Let's go back into the catalog, pick the next one. I feel like these should be kind of in a set. Okay. And let's place another one maybe on the ledge right here. Perspective looks okay. And then let's also add in these different structures. Let's add some towers in, in some spots. You would expect tower defenses to be along some of the ledge to protect the forage from invaders. Already it has a defensive position. It has a crater, so it has this buildup, like a mound going up. There's already a defense there. Add some towers at some key positions along the ledge. And let's go add some smaller ones as well. O key, F key. Let's go ahead and use these small buildings. And just like that cluster rule we were talking about, just place them in and around. Open up the catalog again. Get a different one. Oops. Didn't want to do that. Let's go with these ones. 
Uh, it seems to be the same perspective of the last house we used. Let's use this one. I'm going to do overlap. I'm going to overlap these. Nice one there. You have a nice forge here. Okay, let's zoom out, take a look. Perspective is off on some of them. What you have to do is line them up properly on the, you could line them up with the line work. So I'm gonna place them on this line work here, along here. Sometimes you have to be a little strategic about your placement. The way that I go about that is just following the line work of this large crater here. So I'm following that line work. This one's a little curved like this. This one's following the line work there, okay? Follow some of that line work to give it that strategic placing. Now I'm going to go ahead and break break a rule that I did in the last stream by adding a light source. I'm just going to go in this just for a little extra, a little extra pop, if you will. We're going to open up the O key, F key to open up the catalog. You're going to go ahead and click this search all styles. And what we're doing is we're going to grab a stamp from a different style. We're going to grab a light source. So I'm going to turn off this expand all, and I'm just going to go with light. And sometimes you, if you want one of your POIs to pop out, you can add a light source from a different style. I'm using this light from the fantasy battle maps. I'm going to go ahead and put it on layer 5 so it's above. I'm going to scale it up with the shift key and the mouse scroll wheel. I'm going to make it larger. And I'm going to place it on top where that, where that light source, where these lights are coming out. And if it's a little too bright, then you can just drop the opacity. Okay. Now there are also different things that you can do as well. There's also blend modes. There's over here, it's already set to overlay, but there's a bunch of these that you can explore with. Since we're running short on time, I'm not gonna play with those. I'm just gonna drop the opacity so it's not so overwhelming. And I can even add another one, smaller one, just scale it down with that shift key and just put it right in front of that one as well. Cause it also has fire or forge and you would expect some glow and that will make those pop out more so if you pop, take a step out take a look looks all right and you can add paths like you did with the path tool that are lining around this leading to each location or you can use a texture this is obviously much more zoomed in than this so you can add a texture that can ring around the crater and these dead trees where this forge is but I definitely recommend using those light sources. Yes, I know it is bleeding across styles, but once in a while you gotta do that to make your POI pop out a little bit more. Does anyone have a name or a title for this one? Go ahead and put that in the, uh, in the chat. Okay. Keep going, we'll give a label for that when it some pops up in the chat. Let's go moving on to the floating isles. We're gonna put something on top of these islands. Now if we wanna do that, we also have to drop these down to allow some space up here. Now let's stay, stay true to the style that we're using. These look very front facing. To me, there's not a lot of isometric action going on here, so let's go ahead and Different from these two, let's go ahead and add those front-facing ones. Fallen Stars Hope. Oh, I love that. I'm going with that. Great name, by the way. Oh, yeah, let's go with that one. And I'm also going to just drop the opacity. I do not think I'm going to get all of these done in two hours. <laughs> okay, we're just going to put that over here. Up at the top, there's a lot of negative space, so it's a good place to put it. We'll drop the opacity a little bit more. Oops, that is the size, so don't do that. <laughs> okay, floating islands. Whew, got to pick up my pace. Okay. 
O key, F key. We're going to look up everything else. We're going to turn off that search all styles. Let's stay within the fantasy world. We're going to type in elf. We're just L. This will be just fine. So we've got a lot of options here. These are all front facing. These are perfect. I de definitely recommend using these. And this, this one's quite nice. Now, this will be quite large, but if it's any smaller, they'll be difficult to see. So this is one of those moments where it's going to be highly stylized. So I'm lining up this whole thing to be on top of this whole mountain. That might look weird with the mountain in the background. You can fix that by just adding another tower in the back. If that looks weird. You can push this behind. Put that in the back. And you're, what you're basically doing is stacking these. I realize these are both at 68% opacity, and that's not good. There we go. That one too. My mistake. Okay. I'm going to stack this in the back so it looks like there's some extra height. And then I would stack a tower on top of that because you, these two look very similar. And make sure that base of that tower lines up nicely with the roof. And there's your nice extra high kind of large elven loft. Also, I recommend adding some of these nice these little houses right here. This represents a elven village. You can put these also on top. Make sure that they're overlapping. And what works really nice is to kind of hide this really ridiculous looking line. And the way to do that is just to put some of these at the base. Okay, let's go ahead and use this small one as well, this elven town. We're gonna to place that, let's make it just a little bit bigger and place it here like this. And you're kind of breaking up that line. I already created another line like this, but at least it looks like tiers, different tiers. And the last step is just to go ahead and take these trees, those trees that I have right there, and just put them at the base to kind of cover up. A lot of times you just need to cheat, just cover up stuff. Okay, you don't have to worry about making it look perfect. You just take a couple trees here and there, boom, 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 hide some of that line work. Because right, you're, you're, you want to speed up the process. Don't do more work, do less work. Hiding is this kind of cheap but effective way of kind of hiding some mistakes and some unwanted line work. So now we've added those trees, we've got rid of that, and we can just quickly add a small path, just say going to this to here, just winding down like this, okay? So now they have that nice elven perch, and you just apply that same thing that we did here to those peaks. Okay, so that way you have three different elven lofts. I'm gonna go ahead and save, we finish that section. So now you have these sections to finish up. Let's go move over to an archipelago. Feel free to leave any suggestions for the names of these in the chat. I will rename them in the end, okay? Because we're trying to speed this up. I want to wrap this up within these, wrap the rest of these up in an hour, within the hour if I can, and then move on to the next one. The same techniques that we're using in Fantasy World are going to be used in Fantasy Regional too, okay? Let's quickly save. Let's move on. We're doing trade cities. And this one, this one can be really, really simple. We're going to go with maybe something a bit different. We're just going to make very small POIs. We're going to make a series of symbols. O key, F key. We're going to turn off this, whatever's in the search field. And there should be some icons at the very bottom here. These very simple icons, these markers right here, these are very, very simple. Okay? We're going to go with a different style, entirely different. And this time, I'm just going to go ahead and place them randomly around on each island. And these represent cities in which trade and commerce, they trade between each other. So we're going to make some trade routes. We're going to make some roads that connect these towns. And we're also going to create the trade routes with the path tool and add in a couple boat icons to show that that is what they are, that they are trade routes. I'm kind of putting a lot of these closest to the water. They're going to be port towns. If these are trading cities, then they're going to want to be ports. It's the great way to get more commerce, to get these ships to trade between these towns. Now there's quite a few towns that I've put here. I don't want to put in too much. We're also going to go ahead and put paths to connect these 
as well. Now we want to stick within the same color. These icons have white with black. We could put white with black shadows if we wanted to. Let's go ahead and just make a line and go across like this. And remember that rule about your roads. Don't make them straight, okay? Let's go ahead and adjust the shadow settings. Maybe we can get the shadows to be more prominent. There we go. Okay. And if it's too bright, if that's too bright or you don't like that, then you can switch the style up to let's go with a black with a white. You can change the style. That's what's so great about paths. You can change them up to be whatever you want. Now we've made it the same as these symbols, a white glow, black with white glow. Okay. We're mimicking that style so that way there's continuity. Okay. So let's go ahead and make a path. We're going to make it wind through, go along the coastline like this, make it windy, connect to that one. And you also want to check what layer it's on, right? So let's go ahead and bring the path down so that the trees are overlapping the paths and not the other way around. Okay. We're going to connect any POIs that are on the same landmass. So this is the land route. Obviously, the faster route would be by, by sea. There's no other towns here, so don't worry about adding a path. Let's connect these locations. Oopsie, I just saw some mistake there. So I just connect that path to there. And let's make sure that there's no other locations to connect. Looks fine. OK, so that's our land route. Now we're going to go ahead and place in some boats. So we could just type in boat or ship. I think it should be ship. And OK, so here are some nice ships here. There's two of them. There's this smaller one. Now, this is a, we're going to stylize and make the ship large instead of small. OK, and the reason why we're making it large is because we want to put emphasis on what this map is. It's called a trade cities. OK, so we want to put emphasis on the commerce part, which is going to be mostly by ship and by sail. So we're going to put in a bunch of boats and then we're going to create a route that connects that boat to two different cities. So let's place a couple. Let's go ahead, deselect that one, flip. You're going to see this flip horizontal, flip vertical. I'm flipping horizontal. I'm going to make the ship maybe a bit smaller, go down a couple pixels. Go down a couple sizes so that they're not all the exact same size. Let's go ahead and put this ship there. And let's put some smaller ones. And since these ships are smaller, I recommend the trade routes be smaller because they're not rigged for smaller travel or smaller locations or larger between farther distances. Sorry. We'll add one there. We'll connect here. And then we'll add another one with a smaller distance connecting these two. Flip. OK, flip that like this and even rotate it just a little bit to look like there's some like a wave or something. OK, now we're going with an entirely different path this time. P key. Open up that path tool. We'll make the paths white with no shadow at all. you got to make to remove shadow, remove the blur and the white. And let's go ahead and place it down and make sure that looks right. Let's drop the opacity. Ooh, about that much looks fine. Now the next trick is just to connect. So let's say that this boat sailed from that location and went to there. Now if you're wondering why the path is curved, well, it's just the same thing. Maybe there's some rocks or a reef or some shallow or whatever that reason might be. Okay, Your paths, when it comes to trade routes, don't have to be straight either. They can be, but just think of the same concept. If there's obstructions in the in the road, there will probably be obstructions in, sea, in the sea, OK? Let's go ahead and connect these two. Let's connect this long one there and say that this one went from a longer distance. So let's say it left around here and connect to there. And this one wants to also go there, OK? And you don't have to add boats to all of them. Just add a, to a couple of them just so that people know that they're trade routes. So you can go ahead in and just connect all the various routes together that you want. Like this. Just 
go ahead and put them in there in any arrangement that you that you like okay and now people will understand ah I know what this is this is a trade route okay go up here one goes there already Oop, we forgot one one goes there that's nice let's even put one that goes right like this over to there okay let's go ahead and zoom out take a look and the last thing to do is just to label those cities I'm just gonna put some banners up and I'm gonna go ahead and have the chat name them and we'll do that later because we are running out of time I'm gonna go ahead and put a label the same label on every single one I think that kind of kind of distracts I think just the regular text label will be fine we'll go back and label those later but I hope you get the general idea the emphasis is on the title it's trade city you've given that a clear significance by putting trade routes and identifying them as tr ship trading routes by putting ships along the path okay it's easier if you place your boat first and then the path instead of the other way around because you have to leave some negative space between the boat in the path or if you'd want you can just put it right on top of it it doesn't matter but I just did it that way let's go ahead and save and move on to the next one okay we'll let this save we'll move on to the next one Whew, 10 minutes and I got four more to go Whew, that's gonna be stretching it <laughs> I'll do my best Okay, next one, Wasteland, and I think I went with Ruins. Ah, now this one is going to be quick and easy. Okay, so I'm going to, when you're looking at your terrain, think carefully on where you think uh, your a POI would look good. I like to use negative space as a place to put a POI. So this negative space, and by negative space, I mean no stamps. There's no stamps in this area in between these two ridges here. There's no stamps. That is a nice closure, an enclosure, a nice little area in which you could put your stamp. So I'm going to open up the, the object tool, O key, F key, and I'm going to type in ruin. Okay, and there are some ruin options here. Might as well go with all of them. So there's two options here. We could use maybe all of them. This one I think is also a set. So maybe we can put some other ruins. So let's start first with a central structure for a ruin. Now let's say you don't like that color. Like I personally, this is a front facing. I don't really care much for the color of this stamp. It is front facing and it goes against this. So how do you use front facing stamps to create the illusion of isometric the way to do that is just to use lots of them okay I'm gonna use the luminosity blend mode on this one to pick up the same color as the texture that's there I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger this is that central ruin I'm also gonna go ahead to filters and advanced settings okay click that advanced settings you don't see it you might want to expand your window a little bit or use your mouse scroll wheel to zoom into this section Okay, let's go to tr uh, brightness, let's drop that brightness so it sticks out a little bit against the ground texture, right? We're gonna open up the O key, F key, go back into that catalog, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go back, choose luminosity. Okay, we're also gonna make it slightly darker by dropping that brightness down. Because you want it to match, similar to this, I'm going to drop the size down and I'm going to overlap these a bit. A couple here like this. Two, these two are the same size, so maybe scale it down another size. Scale it down. And the farther you maybe go away from that central structure, the more you can scale it down. Let's also flip so it's not the same. We're doing the flip. And so there's a lot of ruins already going on here, and there's a lot of ruins. Okay, and let's go ahead and add some last stuff. Let's go ahead and add in some of these. These are quite small. 
already. Let's just add a couple and put them on the on the ridge. So at least there's some in elevation. You're going to have to go change that lip blend mode to luminosity. You're going to have to drop that brightness again. We're keeping continuity with the stamps already placed. Put one there. Uh, I believe these are set to random. That's good. Place some up there. Let's go ahead and do that flip tool. We already have one similar to that, so put one there. We're trying to avoid too much repetition. And then one over there, and then just a couple little ones down here, I think, should be okay. There we go. Okay, so you have your nice ruin. That last thing you need to do is just blend in the stamps by picking a texture. It's going to help to make these pop out. These are dark, so let's use contrast to make these pop out a little bit more. Let's go to B key to go to, to go to the brush tool, F key, to pick a texture, go into the catalog. Let's go with a brighter texture, this one right here. The swamp two is, work, should work fine. Let's go ahead and add one stroke just to see how it looks. So save yourself the trouble. Don't start doing the whole thing. Do one stroke first to see how it looks. It's, you're basically doing a test stroke and make sure it's set to the right layer. We're in the next one, so this is the B. Let's place that down like this. And you notice right away that that color helps to make, that light color helps to make these ruins pop out. So that stroke works just fine. Let's drop it down, drop the size down even more. And let's go ahead, mouse scroll wheel and pan, and just go underneath, just at the base of these and add that texture. Okay, and you've done it. Do it again, do a couple more passes. You want the, the texture to stick out the most at the base of your ruins. And the reason why we're doing that again is to create contrast to make these things pop out. You're gonna to wanna to do the same thing with these smaller ones as well. And if you don't wanna do multiple strokes, just boost it up, boost the opacity, and that way you can just do it with one stroke. Okay, it just depends on how much detail you wanna go with, okay? Let's do that, we're adding one there and there. Remember, at the base of all the ruin stamps you just placed. Let's do this one as well. This mouse scroll wheel out, take a look. Looks just fine, ruin looks fine. If anyone has a ruin suggestion, go ahead and put that in. Uh, there is some last things that you can do. Let's rearrange some trees. Let's put them at layer five so they're at the highest layer and we're gonna overlap just some of these ruins, just a few, okay? Because you don't want, you want to have some overlap because that looks kind of nice. Let's go ahead and scale some down, make some smaller ones, overlap some of this. Always remember that overlap. That's a big pro tip, overlap. I cannot stress it enough. Okay, smaller ones are in. Let's go ahead and use that mouse scroll wheel, scroll out and press escape. So now you have this ruin section. So this is where those ruins are. There was nice, there was a, a village that was once here or whatever it is you can come up with the story. We're gonna save, we're gonna keep moving. We're moving much quicker now. Cloud reach, ooh, man, that's for the elven one, that's beautiful. Ooh, silk town, Burt for the archipelago, nice. Ooh, those are just fantastic. Great names. Okay, I'm gonna try to speed this up. You guys know my propensity to get a little carried away. Ugh. So, I don't know, is, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Who knows? So you just get caught up in those details. It's just so much fun. Okay. Jungle pool. Let's speed this up. This is a small village. O key, F key. Let's go ahead and close it up. Get rid of that thing in the search field. I'm going to expand all, and sometimes it's hard to tell what to use, what stamp you want to use. I like that green of the jungle, and I kind of feel like maybe the orc might be a good choice. I look at these stamps, I like these tents. These are interesting. 
I think they might look nice on top of these hills. So we're making kind of a orc jungle settlement, shall we say. And again, I'm going to go ahead and place the most significant buildings, the most important buildings in the higher locations. Okay, so for instance, uh, we're going with isometric. So let's put the towers for defense at the highest locations. Let's go ahead and just make them a little bit bigger. And these also work really nice. These spikes seem to be in a circular shape. So they go nicely on top. That red color goes well with the green palette that we have. So it's kind of a nice color scheme. Let's go ahead and put all our towers at the highest locations. Let's put another tower right here. Let's use a different one this time. And I'm going to place them to where at least the spikes are uh, at least on top and connecting with the line work like I did here. You don't want it to be like this where these spikes are out and random in the middle of nowhere unless they just strategically they look nice. For instance, you keep going, these spikes might be in the water instead. Okay, you just have to think about your, your, your placement. So we'll put another tower there and then we'll put something else here instead of just towers. Maybe we want something a bit more special. Okay, we could use this building, one of these orc cities. These are quite large, they might not work well. So you might wanna say, just using the smaller buildings. There's this nice orc building here. I'm gonna flip it. I want the opening to be facing somewhere else. So I'm gonna place that down. So the opening is there. And I kind of wish these were a stamp set. Uh, let's go ahead and place more. Let's go ahead and flip this one. We're going to place these on the other hilltop. So you have some villages that are here. Let's go ahead and add another small one right here. Oop, that's a little too small. Make it just a tad bigger. Put one there. Okay, I really like that color scheme. That red goes well with this. And I'm not going to add too much. Remember, we're on that time limit. Let's go add some more structures over there, and then we'll call it good. I'll go ahead and add some very small roads, and then that will be that. Uh, let's go ahead and also put stuff in negative space. Negative space here. Let's drop it down a layer. I want to make sure that it's, the tree is overlapping it. So you have a nice little village there. And we're going to go ahead and pump in some roads so that you know what's going on. Road goes here to this location, making sure it's set, make sure it pops out. Let's go ahead and change the opacity. We want to be able to see that. Okay, another road leading to this tower. Oopsie, that's a little straight. That's okay, it'll do. And then uh, there's nothing there. It looks fine there. Okay, I think that's it. We've just added a nice little settlement. There's already been a lot of overlapping over the path so that looks fine let's go ahead and save go ahead and make sure you put your jungle pool suggestions in the chat I will totally label these and I'll make sure to mention your names in the description of the map when I make these public and clonable so that your names will be there I want to recognize all of you for being involved and doing the naming because naming conventions can be difficult so thank you for doing all the hard work for me <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I appreciate all the suggestions, and I'll make sure to fit in as much as possible. Okay, two more left, River Delta. Okay, I'm going to put a River City, and we're going to follow that same strategy that we used here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add in some quick hills. And what I'm going to do is just use the same hills that I saw there put them in here and I'm gonna go ahead and change the luminosity because I just want whatever the ground texture is to go well so I'm just gonna place a couple hills and I'm gonna place some stuff on top of them those hills are gonna work just fine work that one and we're gonna put another smaller one uh, alt key if you want to uh, scroll through a stamp set okay and these should be all be set to luminosity and if they're not good enough if they're not working well enough if they're too bright or don't stick out there's a lot of different techniques you can use you can change the contrast to make those hills blend in blend in a little better you can change the brightness so they're a little bit darker there's all this HSBC these filters that you can use to make 
whatever you're working with to fit in better. Obviously, the first step is just to find a stamp that works default for that setting. If you're in a rush, or if you have you picked a stamp that didn't work as well, you can go back and look for a better one, or use HSBC to your advantage. Okay, make the tool do the work for you. Okay, so we've added in a couple locations here, some hills, and we're just going to go ahead and place in some POI locations, O key, F key. Going to stick with another human location. Human always works fairly well. Okay, and I'm going to use these same POIs that I used before. Let's go ahead and use some different ones. Let's go ahead and use this human town. And we're going to check the size. Now, these are going to be a little bit more exaggerated. So I don't mind the POIs being slightly larger. We're exaggerating the location on purpose. Okay. That doesn't mean that you have to do that too. If you want, you can change it entirely, make it entirely different. That's up to you. And look for these negative spaces. There's a negative space there. I'm gonna put that there. And we're gonna try to keep it all within relatively the same scale. I'm kind of using the trees as a semi-guide. Okay. And I'm also going to move this hill out of the way, and move it over to here, and put this in this negative space. Work with the negative space. That's the real trick. Work with the negative space. Okay, so this nice town's going to go to here, and maybe even put a little section over there. Back to the O key, F key. We're going to go ahead and put in a tower on the hill. Good location for a tower. Now the tower has can see even more of the surround because it's got the height of the hill on top of the structure itself. So it's got some nice range and visibility. You can see over the treetops. You can see the whole surround. And why not, let's put another one over here to, to check this surround as well. So you got these two towers. We're gonna add in some small, just some small town stuff. These human buildings are gonna work just fine. Let's go with the blue ones. Let's change up our color scheme. We've got a lot of reds. Let's keep with some of the blue now. And you're just gonna place them randomly. Let's place one there. And unfortunately, these are to set, but I think they should be. I'm just gonna keep complaining about that. <laughs> and don't forget, you're just placing these in the negative space, but also leave some negative space as well. Let's go ahead and place this one down here. Open up that catalog. There's a human building four. Let's go ahead and put that one in there. Let's put that one down here. And another one over here. Just so that there's some, some repetition is nice. Not too much, but a little bit. A little bit of repetition is okay. And again, just flip that like this. Just flip them so that way it looks like it's a different stamp, even though it's not. Okay. So you've added in some smaller locations with that main section. Don't forget to add in those roads. We're just going to use the same one we've been using, but you can change them. Use that negative space to determine your roads. See that nice negative space there worked perfect. Same thing here. Like this. Okay, same thing. Up to here. Here. There we go. Okay? And if you want, you can add in a building over here and whatever, or you can build a bridge that goes across if you'd like. But you just want to get the general idea. We're going to do one last thing. We're going to just go ahead and add some trees to go overlap the path, as always. Overlap, overlap, overlap. I'm just going to pull some ones from here. You don't have to even place new stamps. Just pull what you already got so much easier than replacing them. Don't forget to overlap some of those structures. I believe they're at layer five, so you'll have to push those at layer five as well to overlap. Okay, because it does look kind of weird without, you would expect some trees growing and overlapping, so that would look nice. We'll add a couple out here, here, and we'll call it good. Don't forget to put those suggestions in the chat. 
Let's go ahead and save. We're going to finish up this last one. We're going to make an ice fortress. Oh, this is so different than any other. But I'm going to try to make it quick. Ice fortress sounds like fun. We're going to do it quick. Thank you, Laura Ger Gerard. I appreciate that. Oh, look at all these great names. <laughs> Starhaven, Silktown, Cloudreach. Oh, these are such great names. Ah, I cannot wait to put these on there. Okay. All right, last one. Whew, and we didn't go over too bad. Ten minutes, so it'll probably be another ten minutes. Okay. So we're going to create an ice fortress. Ice fortress, there is no ice fortress in the catalog. Okay, so you're going to have to tweak. You have to do some work. O key, F key, go to the catalog. Let's go ahead and just pick a fortress. Okay, now this already just, just doesn't fit the theme, right? Doesn't look right. Something looks wrong there, right? Well, there's all these tricks that you can do. One of them is you can drop the saturation, bump up that brightness, and already you've got, and just maybe drop the contrast a little bit like this, and already you've got a fortress that kind of is not so bad. And we're going to make it huge on purpose. These are hills. These are not mountains. They're going to be hills. And we're going to make it big on purpose because when I think of a fortress, I think large and grand. Okay? And that's the, what we're going to go with. So this is not going to be perfectly into scale. We're going to make this nice and big. Okay? We're going to open up the catalog again. O key, F key. And we're going to type in hill. And we're going to use we're going to have fun with the transform tool, transform tool. In fact, let's use mountain instead. I think the mountain would work better. And we're going to look for a mountain that's white and has some sharp peak. Let's have some fun with this. Okay? I'm going to make it fairly large cuz I just want to see what it looks like. And what we're going to do is go to transform in the advanced settings. I'm going to change the width and what we're doing is creating a spike. And that spike, we're going to have those spikes be like crystals coming out or something coming out of the fortress like this, giving it a spiky feel. And I might have to do that by changing the transform on all of them. So let's go ahead and do that manually first before by just changing that width to give it that spike. And we're going to place another one right there. And don't forget to place some behind the stamp as well. So this one is behind, and then we'll put this next one in a layer above that. This, I think, this whole thing needs to go down a layer. If you're going to be stacking, you're going to have to think about layers. That's super important. OK, that's a layer below. Perfect. OK, oops, looks like I have to do that width change again. OK, and this is going to be in the background behind it. Okay, and I'm wondering if we should put one at the very top to give it a spiky look like this. Wondering if that would be a good idea. And don't forget to also put spikes overlapping in the front like this. So it looks like they're protruding at the base of it as well. I'm just going to copy and paste a bunch of these. Rotate them and change the size as well like this. You just don't forget, copy and paste is your friend. Do less work, right? Okay, and make sure you put these a layer behind as well. And put some in the back, like this. And so you have this nice kind of spiky feel to it. Let's go add some larger ones. There's some symmetry going on. So let's break up that symmetry and make one really big one in the front and one really big one kind of like this. So because we're trying to avoid the symmetry the symmetry problem. Now, let's do one more sticking out in the front too. Let's go up layer five. Want that sticking out. One kind of going forward a little bit like this. Might be a good idea. Let's take a step back and just look at it. Eh. Let's put it up here. You might have to experiment and change it up a bit. There we go. I think that looks okay. Let's move that one over just a little more that way. Okay. So now you have this nice fortress going on here. And again, we're going to do something different. We're going to go ahead and add in a light source. Now, we ha I had a light before. 
and we're going to do this again and we're just going to do this to make this fortress have that extra pop okay and we're going to go with search all styles we're going to type in light i'm going to try to do this real quick we're going to pick that orange light source it works uh it works better with hsbc i'm going to make it real big cover the whole thing with it okay and i might even want to consider selecting all of these um, snow-capped mountains. Let's go ahead and click select all from this set. You can go to select that stamp, select all in that group, which we did. And then we're also going to select that large POI, which I believe is that human fortress. I'm going to want to make sure to select it. And I'm going to group it. Okay, and now it's at layer two and it's all grouped together nicely. Don't forget to, to uh, rename it. So now the stamp will be covering the whole thing because I want the whole area to be affected. We're going to go to filter. We're going to go to hue. And let's go with a bluish color. Not green, go with blue. We're also going to drop the opacity. Now you, we can also just play with blend modes. Let's just check that real quick. Some blend modes might work better with others. I'm gonna play with this real quick. I know we're short on the times, but it's sometimes really fun to play with these. Uh, it's hard sometimes to pick, that's cool. But I think the overlay is gonna work for now. That's gonna be fine. I just wanted to give that a little extra pop so that thing sticks out. And you can even add in some mist clouds from there I think there's some different cloud styles just click the select search all styles and put some fog that rings around it that would look really good as well think of it as a magic fog wall that kind of I don't know magically hides this location okay let's go ahead and save that things are doing good the ice is shining. Um, I would use light sources. Absolutely. Use, don't use the orange ones. Use the regular uh, kind of off-white kind of color. Uh, that way it just makes certain sections pop more or texture it in with a brighter texture so that certain areas pop out. That would be my suggestion, Laura Gerard. All right, we're saving. We didn't go too far over. Impressive. We're doing good. I'm, I'm glad that all of you are sticking around. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate everyone sticking through to the end. We've saved it. Let's go ahead and give a quick zoom out and see how we did. Heck yeah, I like it. These look cool. I like the locations. Some I like more than others. But hey, when you rush, what do you expect? Right? Unfortunately, rushing will never make your map look good. <laughs> so you just have to add just a couple, another hour to your map just to make it pop more. And I will label these off screen, off stream, so we can save on time. We're going to go back. I'm going to return to my maps. I'm also going to refresh the page just to kind of refresh the page. There we go. It's going to take me back to my maps. Okay, so we just did the fantasy world. We're gonna go into regional. I'm gonna go ahead and edit the map. All right, so next section. Ooh, here we go. Thank you, Dak Forrest, I appreciate that. Thank you also, Peña Negra. Love your work, by the way, giant fan. Okay, awesome. Thank you for bearing with me on this. I am excited to work on the next one. I tried to add unique ones to each one, so it's not all the same thing. There should be some wild ones in this one. This will be fun. If the map will ever load. Yeah, I know, you sit there, the loading of death. Ah, will it end? All right. So 
let's go ahead and make some POIs for our fantasy regional. Don't forget that this template is in the description, the video description. Go click that link. That's the regional one. We just finished the world one, okay? All right, so what are we gonna put in our mountain range? Well, dragon remains, yes. Hey, you gotta have some spooky area. I mean, it is October, right? So let's do some spooky stuff. O key, F key. Open up the catalog, it should be skeleton, I think. No, that's not the one. Let, I think it should be under bones, let's check. Bones, we're checking the bones, there we go, right. And I think there's a, ooh, that one looks good, and this one looks good maybe the other way, like this. I mean, this is a big dragon, I mean, he's, they, they are much, <laughs> they're as big as these mountains. There's a lot going on here. This, this is a big person. Wow, they're huge. Let's keep going through. I, I think there should be... Oh, hey, that one's even better. I like that one even more. That's cool. And this is a big dragon, okay? So this is their final resting place. This is where they went to die. Where they cradled themselves up against the mountains to breathe their last. All right, so with this one, I'm kind of noticing that they blend in with the mountains pretty good. I kind of like that, though it might be a good idea to add a shadow to give it more depth. So we're actually going to, there's no shadow. Uh, is there a shadow baked in? There is a shadow baked in. That's okay. What we're going to do is switch over to object shadow. Oops, that's a blend mode, so don't, don't do that. Object, and already you've seen there's a little black shadow already that helped to kind of pop out a little bit. You can also change that shadow blur size like this to make it a little bit more closer to it. And also you can change the X and Y offset. Let's drop the shadow down. Now by dropping the shadow and adding a shadow underneath, it gives it this feeling of depth. Okay, that looks kind of good. It does make this, unfortunately it does make this also pop out. I see a little bit of shadow there. You can just cover that up and cheat. The objective was just to kind of make this section pop out. And this is a skeleton. So this guy's been dead. This person has been gone for a while. They kicked the bucket quite a while ago. All the birds and the bees and the animals decided, you're delicious. I'm eating you. And this is all that remains. So this some time has passed. So some stuff's been going on. Why don't we go ahead and overlap some of the uh, mountains to be in front of, so it looks like it's cradled in to more of the mountain side. I'm just gonna click a mountain so that way when I go to the object tool, it immediately selects it. And I'm gonna put this a mountain in front of it. It might have to go up a layer. Aha, there we go. Just like this. And let's see here, we're gonna zoom in with that mouse scroll wheel. Select that. We want some of this mountain to be cradled up against him. That might look kind of nice. And we can also hide some of these ugly things that we don't like. Let's put one. Unfortunately, I can't put one in front of that. You can rotate things sometimes. Let's put one in front of here. Just see how that looks. Looks all right. Let's add some smaller ones so it doesn't look too weird. Let's scroll out. Uh, just use that one. Don't want to do that. Let's put some right on in front like this, in front of that one, some overlap, and maybe some overlap here. And right, ooh, let's see here, one, let's take a look. One right here might be okay. Hmm. No, now I've kind of created a weird line. I wanna keep the jawline. That's, the skull is generally the most recognizable bone. When you're seeing some skeletons, it's the most easiest bone for me to identify is the skull. So we want that skull to be kind of the most important thing. And let's go ahead and add some things in to make it look like it may be dead, but this place is not dead. So let's have some fun with the path tool. This is on layer one, it looks like. Let's go ahead to the path tool, just press that P key. I'm just gonna go ahead and put down a path and I'm gonna put some eyes inside of this dark spaces to make it look like there's something living in there. I think that'd be kind of fun. Drop it down. Let's go ahead and pick the right size we want. 
hmm, what color eyes we want to go? Green, red, blue. Red is kind of eerie. Yellow is kind of creepy. I think yellow might be. Yellow is a good color. Let's go with an orange. Let's go with a yellow color for eyes. Let's also give it some yellow glow. That's too much. Let's bring that blur in, make it tighter. And let's also drop the opacity just a hair. Okay. Let's delete that path. Let's zoom in, max in, and just make some little eyes inside of here. I did this on a couple of my other maps, if you follow any of my work. So you've got some creatures living in there. And if you want, you can even put them in the shadows as well. Remember, you're just making two dots at a time to make the eyes with this path tool. You've got some eyes hiding in here. Like I said, the dragon may be dead, but those that live there, mm, they're still living. Scary. All right. There is that last bit we can do is we're going to add in some texture to get this to pop out. I'm going to go with something kind of maybe a bit different, something with a lot of texture. Let's go ahead and press B key, F key. Look at our options, what we got. I think, oh, I kind of like this snow. That, it's always nice to use alphas. Alphas are really nice textures. So we'll, let's consider that as an option. Let's go with something that's got a lot of artifacts in it. This one is nice. I kind of like this one. We're gonna go to advanced settings and we're gonna go to filters and contrast. What I'm doing is making these, making this texture just, making uh, all the lights and the darks just pop and contrast with each other and that looks really nice and I'm also going to drop the saturation so it gives us this nice kind of eerie kind of feel to it and we have yellow so I'm going to add in green I'm also going to drop the opacity and let's do something different let's go ahead and use our edgy brush now when you're using that edgy brush make sure you drop that opacity down quite a bit Make sure that you turn on that smooth and drop that size way down to three. The first thing you wanna do, of course, always is to immediately make sure that it's set to the right layer, the FG layer, and I'm gonna apply it once just to see how it looks. Okay, so it's not very prominent when you do your first, your first uh, pass, that's okay. We're gonna Alt-Z, we're gonna undo, and we're going to boost it up to 30, and we're gonna bring the size down. And remember, think about negative space, okay? Small brush, just do your first pass in those negative spaces. Okay, and then do that second pass. And you'll see that the artifacts that are in, and by artifacts, I just mean all the little cloud formations and shapes that you see. All you're doing is just applying this eerie green texture. And don't worry, those mountains, we're going to fix that too. So I'm going to cover up, make sure that the, the texture behind each one of these little mountains right here is going to be put to luminosity so it picks up the texture beneath. I'm going to show you how to do that. So I've, again, you want to texture behind these mountains to make them get the right thing to blend properly. Luminosity. You see already, you see the mountains got a weird color right there. And that's okay. I don't mind that it picks that up. We just want these mountains to blend in better. If you just don't like that it picks up, that bring it further down away from it. Okay? That way you don't have to worry about it. And if it doesn't blend in well enough, don't worry, there is tons of HSBC. You can go ahead and drop that contrast down so that these really blend in better with that ground texture because it was those hard lines, the line work, is what made them stick out more. Dropping that contrast removes those hard lines or diminishes those hard lines. So there is our dragon remains there are some a lot of other things that you could put in here there's some blood you could put in blood spatter that's dried up you could add in some skulls you can add in more stuff you can add in graves there's all this stuff that you can do but for now 
that is our dragon remains. And if you have a name for that, don't forget, pop that in the chat. I'll make sure to add those. Let's go ahead and save. I like me some dragon remains. <laughs> Humans would mine it. Yeah, how are you going to mine those dragon remains? Hey, is dragon bone a sturdy, strong material? Can you make some nice weapons with dragon bone? I'm sure they'd harvest it, without a doubt. All right. That is one big dragon. Okay, let's make a wizard's tower. Boop, boop. Wizard tower time. But like, how am I going to do wizard tower? Well, I'm just going to go ahead and make an island in this lake. And I'm going to put a wizard tower on it. And it's really just as simple as that. So I'm going to pick a mountain of my choice. I'm going to make the island. Let's do some strategic placement of our island. Let's look at our mountain range. The curvature comes up like this. Let's just say that it's over in this corner over here. And I'm putting it there as well because I want the tower to overlap these mountains in the background. So let's do a couple things. First, we're going to take that stamp of a copy, paste it, put it down a layer below, and change that to luminosity. So it makes it look like some of the mountain is underwater. Okay? So it looks like that. And I'm also going to change that contrast, change that brightness. I'm going to go ahead and group them together so that they are the same thing. Don't forget to label them. I'm going to move them up because I don't want the line work to be bleeding offshore. You want to keep it in. So we're putting it over here like this. So now you have this nice little island. And we're going to place a wizard tower on top. O key, F key. Let's just click in tower and look at our options. There's quite a few towers. There is a specific just wizard tower. And that's fine. You can just go ahead and use that. You're going to want to think about your scale when you look at this. Let's zoom out and take a look. The mountains. Let's use the trees as the scale. This is a very, very large tower. It's about as high as the mountains. If you want it to be stylized, that's fine. If you prefer to be more to scale, just drop it down. It's up to you. Because it's the only POI and the only location on the map, I'm going to make it big because it's the only POI. If I had more POIs, then I would probably make them more to scale. This is not the case here. This is the scenario is one POI on a single square. So we're going to make the POI big. I'm doing it on purpose. So now you have this island here. There is one last thing that you can do to add some minor depth. I'm going to go ahead and take the path tool. That's the P key. Take a white path. I'm going to turn off that blur. And the objective is to create some wake in the water that's along the edges of this island. And the way that I'm going to do that is just create little lines like this. And you're going to put it where the luminosity mountain meets the mountain that is not in luminosity. Okay, And also drop the opacity and put a couple more at a lower opacity. Let's go even lower than that because those still look pretty bright. Let's go with something even lower. There you go. When you create the ripples going out, have the ripples the farthest away have the most, the least opacity because the ripples are losing their strength, their ability to accelerate, their ability to move because there's no more force to push them. So have the ripples be the brightest where, or the highest opacity when you're uh, up against connecting where the shore is and then have them with the lower opacity as they go away. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and save that. Please come up with a label for this wizard tower. I want a good name. This place is a cool location. I imagine myself just either swimming or taking a boat or ferry over to this tower and ready to slay some wizard butt. That's what I want to do. Slay some wizard butt. Because you know that's going to be a baddie. You know it's going to be a baddie who lives in that tower. Good wizards don't live in lonely, lonely towers on lakes. Come on. Come on. You know it's going to be a baddie. All right. Ooh, worthless person. Don't. Oh, that's a terrible title. <laughs> hey, I'm really glad that these streams are 
helpful though. That's great. That's why I do these. I want you guys to up your game. I want your maps to slay. Okay, mountain lake. Whew, boy, 30 minutes. No way I'm going to get it done in time. We're going to do a bandit's camp. Now, I showed you in the last video how to label label a village by just, or label a woods by just putting a label with text and then just lining it with trees. That same concept, remove, remove that and just put in a bandit camp. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly put together a camp. I'm just going to type in camp and see what options come up. Let's expand all so I can see all my options. First, let's make a campfire. And again, this is going to be stylized. I'm going to make it larger. I want it to be so that you can see it better for you, the viewer. And uh, again, it's just a single location. If these were any bit smaller, you wouldn't even be able to see the POI. So I'm not even going to bother with that. Let's just go ahead and first put our fire. We're going to put two of them. There are going to be two fires, one on each end of the camp. This is a, what's called a glade. A glade is an opening in the forest. And glades are great locations to put stuff. Let's go ahead and flip that around so that it doesn't look exactly the same. We're going to put some tents that are going to line that O key, F key. And thankfully, you can use the that Alt key and the mouse scroll wheel to scroll through it. So this will be a lot easier for placement. Let's go ahead and place the openings so that most of them are at least facing uh, the facing the fire. You want that fire to go into your tent to keep you warm, so keep that tent close by. Let's just start with those three and we'll elaborate from there. Let's open up and add the next ones. Now unfortunately that camp is going to be facing away from it. Apologies about that, but at least the fire can get through. We're going to stick with that technique of sticking with three at a time. Clusters of three look good. I, one thing is don't place them always the same, make them different. I'm gonna overlap, put one here, and push this one to overlap that campfire a little bit. And then we have this nice location here. We're gonna put in some stuff in here as well. Let's go ahead and open up that O key, F key. Let's go ahead and put this in here as well. This is just a nice little piece to add in. It's a technically a jungle, kind of a temple piece but I think it might be be uh, significant to have it here. Let's just say that there are three camps, three camps, or this is a central camp, and these are the two camps where the bandits live. You're gonna say about each one of these camps has about, ooh, about a person, maybe some hold two. This could be the leader's camp. So this is kind of a small ragtag highwayman camp of about five to seven ruffians who just don't play by the rules. They're vigilantes dealing with some poverty, so they need to get some money to get themselves some good equipment and to expand the operations. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take some of these grass stamps and let's go ahead and overlap them over some of the tree, over some of these tents. Just go ahead and pick a couple, you know, put them over there like that. One over there, take this one, put it over there. You're just doing a little bit of overlap to make it look good. Just use what's already there. It's kind of nice instead of having to add more. Because what you're doing is when you add add more, uh, you're adding more to the change history. You're just adding more stamps. So instead, just rearrange what you already have. It's called working with a palette, working with what you already have. So you have all these trees already. You don't really need to place any more. Just rearrange them, move them around. That's easier, less stress on your machine. Now this is this POI is kind of up close, so let's do some for once. Let's do some texturing. I'm going to use dirt as kind of the texture that we want to use. I'm going to go ahead and use a soft brush. Not going to use the edgy brush this time. I'm going to bring it up to 46, increase the size. Let's do one pass. I'm going to put them underneath. And I got to make sure the right layer too. I'm not sure. Am I on the right layer? I am. Okay. So 45. And we're putting some dirt underneath. And we're going to also make it to be foot be foot traffic. Okay? And if it's if that's not enough, but just boost that up to 60%. So you got it a little bit higher if you want. Less less work for yourself. Go ahead and just make sure to connect these camps together. We'll say this is the same road. Have it going like this. This is basically the foot traffic. And where these kind of connect. 
make add a little bit more as well. And let's go ahead and drop our opacity and just also put some along the edge where there's some little paths that people went. Not everyone stays on the trail, and why would you? All the best stuff is off the trail. Haven't you ever been anywhere before? Yeah, all right. There we go. So we have this nice bandit camp set up. There's just a couple more things, I think, to make this look like a bandit camp, and that is to add some um, crates and barrels. Okay, because you know they're stealing stuff. They're taking stuff from camps going by, so we should place some stuff along the edge of the road to make it look like this is their, this is the uh, spoils of their ventures. All right, so we're gonna just line up around the path here some of this stuff. I keep getting some of the same stuff, and that's not what we want. Okay, and we're gonna add some barrels. I'm gonna just go ahead and place a couple barrels together. And do, again, in that groups of three thing, right? Add in a crate over here. All right, so they've got all this, this loot from their travels. Yeah, lots of booty. All right, and the last thing that we can add is, let's go ahead and add in, I think, an execution site. I'm trying to remember which one it was, but uh, I might have to go through it a little bit to find it. Whew. My theory is is that when a bandit breaks the bandit code, they gotta go down. So let's go ahead and add in uh, some gallows so that we can execute them traitors who hid some of the boodle for themselves and not sharing it with the group. They're going down. Hoarders will not be tolerated in the bandit club, okay? So you're going down. All right, I don't remember if there was that or not in this style. Shoot, I can't remember. And I see some crates and stuff. Let's see, where is that? Maybe it's called Gallows, let's look it up. No, no, oh, shoot. Oh no, I need a place of punishment. We need a place of punishment. Oh, come on, there's got to be something. Maybe we can make a pit, throw them in the pit instead. Yeah. Hey, you break the code, you go in the pit. That's where you're going. Going in the pit. All right. Let's go ahead and throw in this one, give it a natural look. doesn't have to be all spicy and everything. Let's go ahead and bring it down. It's going to fit in this negative space here. Don't worry, we have the glorious luminosity mode to fix that problem. Okay, and if it doesn't match in well enough, you can always change that contrast. And the last thing that we want is I want to add some grass to line around it so it doesn't look super weird. It blends in a little better when just overlapping some grass. Whoa, hey, that's a, that's a really big grass. Okay, there we go. So this is the place of punishment. And I think, honestly, too, I want to just transform it just a bit so it's a little bit more isometric. And I gotta make sure I move this around, move that around. There we go. There we go. All right, let's take a zoom out. The place of punishment has been completed. You naughty bandits are gonna be thrown in the pit. Oh, you could hang someone over the pit. Oh. I'm sure we could come with all the dastardly punishments that befalls those who betray us. All right, 15 minutes. Whew, yeah, there is no way that I am going to get this all done in 15 minutes. So I, for those of you who have stuck through it this time, thank you so much. I appreciate it. We still have quite a few to go. Thank you, Philip, for sticking through and being a great moderator. You've been so helpful. I have been moderating just a little bit, and I really appreciate your help. All right. Yeah. Bandit camp done. Place of punishment done. Check. Hey, swamp trading post. I like it. And I've already left some negative space in here to put our outpost. 
Boom. Let's click that object tool. O key, F key. Top in jungle. I, hey, I didn't know jungle was spelled with an eight. How'd that happen? Okay. Well, since it's a kind of a jungle, is it a jungle? Wait, is it swamp? Wait a minute. I think it's swamp. Well, I think jungle will work just fine. Jungle will work just fine. It's a trading post. Let's go with a very, very large stru structure. It's a trading post, right? So let's go with a big structure. Oopsie, let's kind of fix that. Let's think about our size. I think that should be all right. I kind of like that it already fits in that negative space already. And let's have some overlap. So I'll put it behind this tree. And we're going to go through all these jungle stamps. I just got to piece them together to kind of create this kind of trading post. Okay, let's put that over there. Oh, well, look at that grass. It's just growing on the structure. That's not right. But let's do some overlap. Yeah, there we go. Why was there grass growing there? That's so weird. Okay, let's go add some more structures. We're going to create a ring so that the path comes in, rings around, and goes back out. I can't stress it enough. Curvature is the game, okay? Curvature is the game. The more curve you got, the better. Straight lines are, oh, my eyes! You don't want too much. You want a nice balance of straight lines and curves so you're not trying to clean your eye, your eyes with Brillo pads. You're like, the straight lines, it burns! Okay, let's go back in, get some more jungle stuff. Where, what are we doing? What are we doing? What's next here? Ooh, I, I like this tent. This is nice. So we can put that one in there. Smaller one. That's nice. Right? Is it set to the right layer? Yeah. Why are these not in a set? Uh-uh. Just, I'm just going to keep complaining on why things aren't in a set. Okay, we'll add some there. Because remember, we're creating that ring. Ooh, this one will be nice. We'll put that there. And then there needs to be some here as well to finish up that ring. Let's see here. Let's go with that. Jungle tent number 10. Make it a little bigger. There we go. Hide in there. I see you hide in there. Okay. All right. Whoo. Those look like those pop out quite a bit. Woo. I'm wondering if I should select all of these and maybe make them a bit darker because they are so bright. What do you guys think? Drop the brightness? Yeah, let's do it. Let's see what it looks like. Oopsie, I'm only doing one. Or missing one. Come on, you can do it. Oh, and I missed that one too. Oh, naughty, naughty. There we go. Make it a little bit darker because it was so bright. We wanted to blend in just a little bit. We'll use a bright texture as the ground as we did in that world video. Like this texture right here works just fine. And we're just going to drop that opacity. Make sure it's not too bright. Oops, sorry, that was loud. Oh, and I have to make sure that I'm on the right layer, which I don't think I am. All right, so we're going to make a little dirt road, and I'm going to have it loop around this structure, go up into these, and then create another loop that goes like this, another loop. Okay, so the path's going to lead through here and going out somewhere. Let's just do a little bit more in here, a little bit more, a little bit more. And there's that negative space there, so we can put something there if we want. And let's even put some there as well, going to this structure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, we can make this kind of a crossroad going into here, out to there, and add another one to crossroads out to here, maybe another one that goes to there. So this will be kind of our crossroads, and we're going to make it to where... The texture sticks out a lot in that crossroad area. Okay, there you go. So you have your crossroad there. Everything looks nice. This is a nice trading post. And the last thing that I would suggest is just adding those same barrels and crates. It's a trading post. So you are going to kind of expect some kind of goods lying around. So we'll put those goods in the negative space. And we're also going to line them along the road like we did with the bandit camp put some there make sure they're overlapping some of this as well that's fine and put one there okay there we go and that's it your trading post is done don't forget to put that label or put the name of this trading outpost in the chat
And I will go over all of those. Hang some over the pit with it. Ooh. Someone made a suggestion. Ooh. Oh, wait. I mentioned that earlier. Ooh. There's my brain. You see? Now, look. If you stream for over, over an hour and a half, your brain kind of goes scrambled egg a little bit. Maybe the sunny side up with my brain. I don't know. But you look at a screen for too long, and it just it fries you. So I'm going to be a little goofy in the later parts of the stream just to kind of give you guys a heads up. All right, sweet. We are moving. Yeah. Ooh, 10 minutes the stream is over, but at least we finished the top row. We're going on to the desert, and we're going into some desert dwellings. Yeah. Little dwellings. O key, F key. We'll go to the catalog. Let's type in desert. Oh, now looky there. There's some nice stuff. Mmm, okay. Maybe a mixture here. Let's go ahead and do that rule of three. You remember that. This one's a, a, uh, a stamp set, so there's a bunch of them. We're going to go ahead and drop that scale down quite a bit. I think this size should be fine. Clearly, they're massive in compared to the mountains, but when you put it up against the tree, it looks okay. All right, so we're going to put civilization along the edge of the desert and not in directly in the desert. We'll put some ruins in the direct desert part because, hey, that's what happens when you make a dwelling in the desert. It's not going to go so well. So we're going to go ahead and put ruins there. That doesn't mean that you can't. I'm just doing it for the sake of fantasy. We're going to go ahead and make some dwellings, and we're going to put a couple of them together like this. Remember that? Groups of three rule. Remember that. The groups of three. Put some in like this. Put one there. So there's a dwell some dwelling there, some dwelling there. And maybe just put like a small dwelling over here. Okay, just put, maybe put one more. Let's see. Ooh, let's see what we want. Uh, maybe one there. Okay, so all our dwellings are along our mountains. Okay, and we're going to also make some ruins as well so we got some desert ruins here nice we're gonna put one over here and I'm also going to uh, drop the opacity for a reason because I kind of want it to look like there's this kind of heat distortion the wind and sand blowing kind of creating this distortion making this kind of be faded a little bit and that is why I am going with uh, dropping the opacity and I'm gonna do the same thing because you're using again you're making those negative spaces this mountain creates this net these uh, dunes kind of create a frame in this negative space and this kind of um, ruin fits well there we're gonna do that same thing O key F key with the other ruin right here desert building I already have the opacity down so that's nice let's put one there and if you're not satisfied with with that, you want to put one on each end of the desert. That's fine. Let's say that there's one a lot close to this. Um, and let's rotate this too. Let's put one close to this oasis so that there's a ruin to explore next to this oasis. And there's this ruin over here. So this is where you go to kind of explore and have your encounters. And here is your talent. Now, the last thing that I would recommend with your town is just kind of putting in some uh, trees because you're not going to have a town without a water source without some kind of irrigation so you should put a well in each location and maybe just a little bit of trees don't forget to have them overlapping just a couple some might not ha might have less than others just put a couple just to give it some greenery and leave some negative space for uh, your well don't forget that let's take a look we put trees in each section Let's go to the O key, F key, add a well. We'll type in well. There are two wells, I think. There's kind of this ruined one, which I think would probably look a little better. We'll put one there in the center of those clusters. And we'll put one over here right there. And we'll put one over here as well. And if you don't want them to all be the same, just you know, flip that flip rotation option. Just also know that these shadows are baked in, so there will be inconsistency with shadow work. That, unfortunately, is kind of the price to pay when it comes with the regional style. It has baked in shadows. 
That's something that maybe we can address in the future. That last thing that you need to do is to add in some kind of maybe a stone or dirt or some kind of texture to go as the uh, road. And we're just gonna go with the same texture that we did before, this kind of yellowish one. And I'm gonna go ahead and just boost up and place it around like this. Just have it go to each kind of location then have it go out into the desert. And same thing with this one. Just make sure you go around the well and a little bit around each section like that. And then there's one more, again, around the well, sticking in between each section, have it going out into the desert. Okay, and ooh, let's add one more right here as well and have that going out and connect. There we go. All right, the last bit is to add some grass. You want a little bit of grass beneath uh, the palm trees, just a little bit, not too much. A little bit of green, just to get, make it look nice, like there's some green there. And one more over here, just to this patch, and that little grouping, and this little grouping. Oops, and I just realized that tree is on the line work, and that is just not gonna do. Bingo. Okay, I think it's all done. Let me just double check. Sweet. Awesome. So you have your ruins out in the desert area, and you have these three settlements that you can go to. Let's go ahead and save. Don't forget to add what you want to call that settlement in the chat. Thank you so much. Ooh, yeah. All right. Sweet. Five minutes left and three more to go. Whew. Well, I think the last stream we did went over a little bit, too, so let's just, you know, We'll keep tradition here and just be a little late, right? I don't think anyone's gonna mind. We're we're moving quickly. We're each adding each settlement in. I just want to give you guys also an update on next month's stream. Streams are gonna be awesome. We're gonna be making a entire capital city starting from a village, telling a story from the village and how it grows into a capital city. It's going to be awesome. I'm super excited to do it. I have been writing backstory and coming up with terrain that works best to place this village to a city setup. I am very excited for that. All right. What do we got here? Ooh, a tree town. <laughs> tree town is great. So I'm going to go off to the side to a negative space where I can work without accidentally clicking anything. There's a lot of trees here. You would expect that in a jungle to be dense. So let's go ahead and jump over to some space on the map where I can go ahead and put some things together, group them and place them on top of the trees. How are we gonna do this? O key, F key. We're gonna type in dock. Now you've got these nice wooden docks right here. These also work well for boardwalk. When we're gonna make these big at first because that way they're easier to see and to work with. So I'm just gonna place three together like this to create your boardwalk. I'm also going to group these three together so they're all in the same layer and we're going to rename them dock or just call it um, boardwalk. And now all you got to do now is just place some structures on top of this boardwalk and then connect those structures with more of these docks and that's it. That's really how as simple as it gets. O key, F key, and you know what? We're gonna make it elf. So let's go ahead and make it an elf one. It's an elf jungle. Oopsie, I don't think that's going to work. I think it might be elves. Aha, there we go. All right, so do we want it to be elves? Do I think we did an elven loft earlier, and we already used that jungle. Hmm, what do we want to use? Interesting. Hmm. Well, elves make sense. It's in the trees. Let's do that. But some of these are super grand. Might be a little too big. Let's put one down and just see how it looks. That might not work. These seemed white, made of stone, and they don't really go in a jungle. I wouldn't expect uh, stone structures to be in trees. I would expect wooden ones to be. So let's go with a different one, go with a different theme. You know, I really, really like those Tudor style buildings. They're made of wood. I think most of them are made of wood. 
Uh, some might be made of stone. Let's select one and take a look. You know, this looks like, to me, mostly be made of wood. That's great. Make sure that you place this a layer above, by the way. Okay, up a layer. Make sure it fits on there. Okay, and you can even add another one over on this side like this. Let's just scroll through. Let's add another one right here like this to the side. So you have this nice negative, this nice space right here where people can walk. We're going to go ahead and group. We're going to rename that group and let's just call it Town Hall. Or Building 1, let's just call it 1 so I know that it's within the same thing. And you're going to place it, make sure it's a layer above all those trees. And we're going to scale it down. And we're going to put them in the most dense part of the forest. So where it's most dense, it's, that size looks about right. And one thing I do recommend doing as well is opening up that group. Let's see here. No, where did that group go? My bad. I recommend uh, actually copying and pasting that that platform that we made so that I can make more of them. So copy that boardwalk and then place it down here on the side. There we go. Now you have that boardwalk platform and you're going to put more buildings on it. So this is nice and dense. So let's put a structure there. Let's also go ahead and go back to our tutor stamps and put some more on top of there. Let's take a look at our options. I'm going to go with the ones that fit fairly well. Again, make sure it's set to that right layer. Okay, that looks about right. So let's go ahead and just copy and paste this. Let's always put one to the side there of two, just in case I have them. Let's group that one and go ahead and place it. Make sure it's up a layer. Let's put one over here. That looks fine. And we'll make sure to connect those with some boardwalk. Also put someone over here, not too many, just enough. And you're going to want to have to factor in your boardwalk, by the way, when you put them in. So let's go ahead and put the boardwalk together real quick so you can see how I'm doing that. Let's make sure it's set to the right size. Let's make these a little bit smaller. And let's make sure it's set to the right layer. It's behind that one. And let's also make sure these connect. OK. I think that needs to go a layer up. Oopsie, that won't work. I think maybe this one has to go down. Sometimes this can be kind of tricky. Okay, let's take this down a layer. There we go. And connect them like this so you can get to that boardwalk. Technically, boardwalk probably wouldn't be so straight. It'd be really kind of windy. I'll give you, if you want something a bit more windy, let's stack them together like this. I'll show you. So you're putting one together like this, and you're kind of piecing each one around like this. Let's go ahead and put these together. This might be kind of difficult to put together. See, already it looks kind of odd. You might have to fix that with some foliage. You know, if there's a mistake, just, just hide it. That's really the best trick. Just hide your mistake, and that's okay. It's okay to hide mistakes. It's okay. Don't, don't worry about that. All right, so put those together. So now you have this circular shape here, so that works fine. And the way that I like to do it is I like to take a bush like this, and all you do is just place it in front of it like that so that it blends in. You might have to go up a layer too, by the way. You want them to be overlapping. Okay, and just add some more. Let's put one there. And let's put one overlapping that one and overlapping that one there, there. And let's put some in the back as well, like this, like that. Oopsie, I think that one needs to go down a layer. There we go. So it looks like it's nestled in the trees. So that's done. And I think you understand how that works. I'm going to go ahead and put some platforms here. And I'm going to go ahead and have you guys go ahead and put those together yourself for cloning because we're running short on time we're already over so i'm not going to worry you understand how it works it's simple make the platform place your structure on top of the platform go ahead and string those platforms together using these docks and then use these 
uh, bushes to hide any kind of weird inconsistencies, things that look weird, and just to overall create more foliage for your forest uh, treetop. Okay, that's it. Don't forget to add those names. Ancient land of the Akani people. Oh, God, I love that. Great one, Laura Gerard. Are you a writer? I think you are. Where do you come up with these great names? All right, yeah. Yeah, I like that. This is like one of my favorite ones to put together. Yeah, and we're only five minutes over and we have two left. Oh, that's not too bad. So the stream will last another half hour, perhaps, 25 minutes. And then I will leave you all back to your, your lovely days, which I hope they are all doing very well. Okay, saving, we're saving. Oh yeah, 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 okay. Note to self, don't sing during saving. That's bad. All right, grassland and a bloody battlefield. Ooh, this one's gonna be good. All right, how do we wanna make a bloody battlefield? Lots of blood and lots of corpses. Fits in with the theme. Lots of carnage. Yeah. So, unfortunately, with the fantasy regional style, there are no corpses. There is no blood. You can paint, but you can just use texture. So, let's go ahead and put some bodies down. So, you're going to want to do corpses. This is a bloody battlefield. So, that means the body, the battle took, uh, took place recently. There should be lots of blood. It hasn't washed away with rain and weathering and everything like that. So we're going to want some fresh bodies and some blood. Okey F key. Search all styles. I know we're cheating. We're going outside of, outside of the style, but I don't know how else to do it. So go ahead and type in corpse. Now that I think there should be some corpses in the uh, fantasy uh regional style or fantasy i'm sorry not regional <laughs> fantasy battle map there's a couple of them here they should be in a group now this one's going to be a bit tough we have to scale it down i think about this size looks about right and we're going to strategically place some bodies person dying up against this tree right here and we're going to also turn off the uh shadows for now not going to add any shadows and then we're, we're also going to just randomly place Press escape D, and we're going to put bodies again in the clusters of three. Okay? Now, I'm not going to worry about how strategic, where the battle lines took place and all that stuff. I I'm not going to bother with that. Okay? But in a, if you want to do a, an actual bo battlefield, how bodies would be placed, and you want, um, you know, look what is what and all that stuff, that can be in another stream. For this one, I'm just going to strew, bo strew bodies everywhere with not much rhyme or reason so that can be fixed uh with in a future video we can we can cover that i'm just going to create a general line of where like a battle formation was so you have some nurses maybe water boys people helping out who died along the line could have been an arrow barrage maybe the enemy let loose a bunch of arrows we don't know so that's a story for you to figure out later. But for now, I'm just kind of strewing bodies everywhere just to kind of create this where bodies, a body, a, a battle line was formed. And you can create more, you can create another smaller line. Like we can go into battle strategy and formation and all that stuff in another video. I am a big military history buff. This stuff is very, very interesting. So that can be done in another video. So we have these bodies strewn around like this. The next step is to go ahead and find some blood. You can type in blood in the search field. I know they're in fantasy. Uh, I know there's two of them. It looks like they're in two styles, and including some blood circles. But let's just go with this one. And I'm going to drop the opacity a bit. So it makes it look like some time has passed. It's, some of it is fresh blood. Some of it isn't. And we're going to go ahead and put some above and below. If you're going to put blood above a corpse, I recommend you drop the opacity so that some of the corpse is visible. Okay? If you're going to do it below, then you don't have to worry so much about opacity. I'll give you an example. If I'm using this one, I just put that there, and the blood should be underneath. Okay? 
I recommend a little bit of both, having some blood be at full opacity and some blood being at partial opacity. That would be my suggestion. Let's do the first one by just having some be at, uh, oh, let's make sure it's also set to random. I would totally recommend setting the blood be at random, especially if you're placing a lot of them. Technically, all of them should have blood, but we're just gonna do some underneath, and then we're going to put them up another layer and then drop that opacity again. Bring it down, let's go 45%, and we're just gonna place them around one here, put some there, there. Okay, got a bloody battlefield. There's no settlements going on here, I understand that. But we can put in some settlements and we will, don't worry. Yikes, oh, this is just not a happy scene. It's just not, it's just not going, it's not going well. That's unfortunate. Oh, and I saw Laura, you do, you do right a little bit, aha. Okay, sweet. Now I'm gonna create some trails of blood and I'm also gonna drop the opacity and just add just a couple more that are faded out and just place them around like this. And we are gonna add some settlement stuff in. So we do need to add a settlement real fast. Let's add in a settlement. We've added in that bloody battlefield. Ha ha, there we go. Yes, yes, yes. Lots of blood. I, sh I shouldn't be excited about this. What? What? That's not right. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Whatever happened here just it didn't. It didn't go well. There wasn't a good battle. Technically, there would be so many more bodies. Really, depending on the size of the battle, the scale, the forces involved. But for now, this is what we got, and we're going to add in just a couple tents and stuff to make kind of a, an encampment that took place. So we want to add just a little bit of the encampment, and we will change some texturing with that. Let's put the camp down here somewhere, add in the tents. It's a military, so don't be afraid to add some uh, similarities. A lot of the tents are going to be the same. So let's go ahead and just create clusters. It's not a huge military camp. Copy, paste. That's going to be your friend. Copy, paste, copy, paste. So this is going to be an encampment. So you're going to add some uh, some repetition with this military camp. You're going to expect, you should expect that. Okay, and we'll have some off to the side down here as well. There we go. So we're also going to add a brown texture underneath, of course. Underneath, so now you have this kind of encampment. We're going to add a little bit of dirt all around too as well like this think of these as like roads enemy lines and if you have time and you want to go over you can put some um, <clears throat> some barricades and some wall stuff maybe some fallen logs or whatever it is you want to use for like a barricade for me I'm just focusing on the bloody battlefield make sure to get it well it's here and we're at the last one I think yeah Awesome. Let's go ahead and save that. Dun, dun, dun. We're almost there, folks. We're almost to the end. Oh, and this one's going to take a little time, too, but we got 15 minutes, so keeping with tradition, just going to be stylishly late. Yeah. I like, or not late, sorry. Stylishly uh, going on longer than it should be, though I am also stylishly late. That as well. Not with streams. That's not true. I'm, I'm lying. Okay, yeah, come on now. Now we're gonna do some undead invasion. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be a good one. We're sticking with that theme, right? I know, the invasion is not really a settlement, but we can create a settlement that's being invaded, right? Yeah, okay, let's do that. I just wanted to spice these up because I didn't want to keep making the same thing over and over and over again. All right, let's do it. We're gonna O key, F key. We're going into the catalog. We're going to take some cracks. I think there's some pits and cracks. I'm thinking to myself, the undead are crawling out of the pit, out of the underworld to come and consume your soul. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. All right. Let's look up some pits. I think a pit is good. 
We added a pit to that bandit camp. Let's add a pit to the uh, to the undead. It's a coming out to get you. Ooh, I like this. This is nice. Yeah. Ooh, that's a big pit. Yeah. Big pity. Now we're talking. Oh, sorry, Lauren, that you have to go. Thank you for staying as long as you did. And don't forget, you can watch this. This is recorded. Just wait for it to load, and it will be available to you. Take it easy. All right, let's go add in our pits. That sounded weird, right? Yeah, I think it added weird. All right, let's add in some pits. Let's add in a couple pits. Yeah, put one there and one there. Oh, man, you're messing with the dead. They're coming for you. All right. Oh, I don't think that... Ooh, that texture doesn't look good. See, 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 it's so... We gotta pick some texture to make those blend in good, right? Let's add in some cracks and some eerie glow lights, and we gotta put in a settlement that these guys are gunning for. So let's put a little settlement over here. Put a small one. Let's put in a little village. I think... Uh, I think there should be some villages. Let's take a look. Yeah, oh, there's some village stamps. This this should work just fine. Let's go ahead and add some of these. Those are massive, so let's put in one here. And we can even add in another one over here, closer to the pit. Oh, sorry guys, you're gonna die. <laughs> I hate to see you go. All right, let's add in just some random ones, just like some little random ones. Put one on top of here. Make sure it's on that right layer. Nope, it is not. I mean, don't you just wish it would magically just be on the layer it, you want it to be on instead of having the tool do it? Urgh, frustrating. All right, let's put some some settlements in here. Let's put one there and put one over here. So we have this nice settlement going on here. And then... Over there, yeah, now we're talking. All right, so we got our settlement, and unfortunately, this brand new settlement is going to be destroyed. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I didn't even get a chance to know any of you. Okay, let's go ahead and use a grayish texture to kind of make it look like there's some corruption and some evil going on, if you know what I mean. Let's go with our edgy brush and change it down to three drop that opacity and let's go ahead and do one stroke i think it's f key i mean our one key for the f g let's just make sure there we go all right and so what i'm going to do is just kind of blend in these stamps in with the background texture and in fact i don't even know if that glob looks good we might go with something different let's just go with a soft brush instead not so sure that's going to work the way I had expected to, but we will put some cracks and stuff to make that work better. Let's just go ahead and bring up our opacity, put it over this like this, and get this in. And we'll also change the luminosity so that these blend in with that texture better. I got to tell you, the luminosity is a lifesaver. Ah, helps so much. Totally use it. Use it, abuse it, please. Use it, use it. All right, here we go. All right, now let's go ahead and change the luminosity of these. Sweet, but I'm trying to make this quick. We're going to select these, we'll change it, luminosity. If it don't fit right, you can also change that contrast, or you can change the brightness to work with whatever way you want. It all depends, so let's go with that. And let's also just drop that opacity. There we go, give it some faded look, just a hair. All right, that looks nice. And we're gonna wanna use some other textures too to help. Let's go ahead and now add in some spooky, spooky stuff. Let's go add in some light sources. We're gonna search all styles, let's add light. And I think there's this nice kind of light source like this. This one is working good. We're going to go up, change it to you. I think we've got a lot of green going on. Let's go with purple or maybe pink. Kind of a purplish color might work well. Let's do that. And we're going to have it coming out of the pit like this. Dun, dun, dun. They're coming for you. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. You got this eerie glow coming out of the pit. And the other thing that we're going to want to do is add in some cracks. I want to make some cracked ground. And I'm going to use some different texture this time. B key, F key to go to that catalog. And I am actually going to 
use some textures from the Battle Fantasy Battle Map 2.0. There's this nice cracked ground texture. I think it's in here somewhere. Let's take a look. This texture right here, this cracked texture right here, I think it's called cracked ground. This is a very versatile text or um, texture because it is an alpha. It will pick up whatever texture is below it. So only the cracks will stick out. This is a absolute lifesaver. I've used it on so many different map styles. So I recommend it. Let's go ahead and drop the size down first. You see the cracks are absolutely massive. And we don't want that. We want the cracks to be smaller and more visible. We're gonna also Make sure it's a higher opacity, and underneath, you're going to see that there are some cracks. And what I want was kind of the earth is opening up, and these pits are opening up, these mouths that are opening up into the underworld, and letting out the dead to mess with your mama. Because mama is on the menu when it comes to the evil invasion of the dead. You are dinner. All right, so you have some cracked ground. That looks nice. Now we've got some action. See, it works so well to add this cracked texture. I mean, it works on every style. I've used it in every kind of map, so it works really well. Okay, so we've got that cracked gown, and this is like where the undead is coming out. That last step is to kind of just add just a little bit more goodies by adding maybe some either some spooky tendrils or maybe adding some skeletons or something. I think that might work okay. I don't know how this would work as a POI on your map. I'm kind of making more of a scene, but hey, don't tell anybody. Okay, so let's do that. Let's add some spooky tendrils. You know, the path tool is just so incredibly versatile. I love using it. Let's go with a pink, same kind of pinkish color that we got there. And let's bring up the opacity so I can see it. Let's add some shadow. Let's add some purpley shadow to it. Some purple shadow. And we might want to even drop the opacity down a bit more. That's good. We're going to delete that. And I'm just going to create some spooky tendrils kind of making its way towards the uh, towards the village. Like, ha, 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 ha. Menacingly going towards the village. Ooh. There we go. Ha ha. You're going down. Dinner. All right. There we go. All right. Yes. Yes. Spooky. Coming for you. Hey, and don't forget, please come up with a name for this village right here in the name of the invasion. I don't know. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be the dead, but hey, I think it's kind of fun. The last bit you could do is just add a light source that kind of covers the entire region. That it's taken place in so just take a large one like this make it big and drop that opacity because you don't want it to be too bright let's just take a look and just place it on top of where at least is covering up all three of where those light sources are so if i place it down like this you're going to see that eerie glow is all over that region which is what you would expect okay that is it i am done sweet and under 2.5 hours. Oh, impressive. You know you know how I can monologue on for hours. Ugh. I hate to drag you into that. I will try to improve my orator skills. So we are reaching the end. Yes, the path tool is the supreme tool. Yes, the path tool is the magic tool. You might just call it the magic, the magic tool because that is what it is. It is a magical tool. All right, well, hey, so while this is saving, let's go ahead and just kind of review some stuff. One, please go join our Discord. Our Discord is amazing. We have incredible moderators and incredible users. Everybody is absurdly friendly and kind. That link is in the uh, chat. I think it's near the top. Check for Philip. I think he's the one who posted that. Don't forget, when you join the Discord, go to the roles channel and click the incarnator role. You're going to need that role to see all of the channels. Otherwise, you're going to be left in the dark and nobody wants a fog of war when it comes to more goodies. So, hey, don't forget, click that incarnator role so you can see all the goodies on our server. All right? Next thing, don't forget, 
Next week, we'll be doing another one of these things, so I'm excited about that. You know the time. It's always the same, Wednesday, 10 a.m. PDT. I keep it the same so that that way you always know and I'm not shifting up that schedule, okay? Last thing I just want to say is don't forget to just go ahead and uh, clone and edit. I'll make sure that these maps are on my profile so that you can edit and use these for your own or just download them for a guide. Thank you so much for watching. Click that like button. Subscribe. Please subscribe to our channel because we want to provide more goodies for you. All right. It has been so much fun. Thanks for bearing with me and have a wonderful week. Adios. Thank you so much and merry map making world builders.